Did you know the first ever burn deck was called Sly? The brainchild of Jay Schneider, a renowned deck builder at the time, Sly was a mono red deck that played small, aggressive creatures that had a high power to casting cost ratio, but often with a drawback, such as Iron Claw Orcs. With an arsenal of cheap but efficient creatures, the deck would use its direct damage spells to either clear the path to deal combat damage or finish the opponent off. However, the deck's infamous moniker was not after the man who designed it, but rather the person who first experienced success with it. Paul Sly piloted the deck at a Pro Tour Qualifier Tournament in 1996, taking second place. This was good enough to qualify him for the Pro Tour at the time, and as word of the deck quickly spread, the name Sly stuck. In the summer of 1997, David Price, also known as the King of Beatdown, played his version of Sly called Dead Guy Red at US Nationals. The deck played similarly to traditional Sly decks, except it ran Fire Blast and creatures with haste like Ball Lightning, Bayashino Sandstalker, and Lava Hounds for an even faster kill. Mainly due to a poor finish in the draft portion, David did not make top 8, but his red deck did go undefeated. With the release of Tempest, David Price designed a faster, more resilient version of Dead Guy Red. With efficient one-drops such as the newly printed Jackal Pup, Mog Conscripts, and Mog Fanatic, and a late-game engine in Curse Scroll, David's Tempest-only constructed deck made history by winning Pro Tour Los Angeles in 1998. This new version of Sly continued to dominate the pro scene with new cards being added such as Mog Flunkies and Mox Diamond. David would later write several theory articles, with his most famous article, The Art of Beatdown, still having relevance today. Later iterations of Sly were called Red Deck Wins, or just RDW. Still using the same core strategies, Red Deck Wins remained aggressive but adapted control elements in the form of mana denial lands like Rashad and Fort and Wasteland. Around the time of Invasion, Red Decks began changing. There were decks that followed a beatdown strategy with creatures such as Raging Goblin, Skizik, and Flame Tongue Founder, while others played less creatures and more spells. Grim Lava Mancer is one of the most powerful one-drop creatures in the game. This human wizard was played throughout its life in standard and was recently reprinted in Magic Core Set 2012. While it didn't see the same success as its first printing in Torment, Grim Lava Mancer still sees play in Modern and Legacy Burn, mostly as a late-game closer. Even though aggressive decks did exist during the days of Onslaught and Mirrodin, Burn was pretty much on hiatus. It wasn't until Lava Spike from Champion to Kamigawa that Burn finally got a new spell in its arsenal. In Ravnica, City of Guilds, the Boros introduced us to Lightning Healers. One of the best direct damage spells ever printed, this versatile, multicolor spell saw play throughout its life in standard and led to one of the most epic top decks in all of Magic. What is on top of the deck? Oh, oh it's Lightning Helix! Oh my god! Oh my god! While it hasn't seen a standard reprint since its debut, Lightning Helix has been reprinted in Modern Masters and other box sets and lives on to this day in competitive modern and legacy decks. Another burn spell was Rift Bolt from Time Spiral. This new but lesser version of Lightning Bolt has proven to be a top tier burn spell who loses little by waiting a turn for it. After 14 years, Lightning Bolt unexpectedly returned to standard in Magic's Core Set 2010. The flavor text itself even noted the surprise factor, featuring a Spark Mage who witnessed a quote, fierce energy he never thought to see again. Sparking a new power level in standard, Lightning Bolt was ubiquitous in the format and remained so as it was reprinted again in Magic Core Set 2011. However, it wasn't until the introduction of Goblin Guide in Zendikar that brought a return to the burn strategies of old. Red Deck Winds was back in standard, but only for a short time. Other creature cards that topped the curve were Goblin Bushwhacker, Plated Geopede, and Cargan Dragonlord, while Searing Blaze, Fork Bolt, and Burst Lightning filled the direct damage slots. Burn did not see another solid spell until Boros Charm debuted in Gate Crash. Poor damage for just 2 mana, this mobile spell was a powerhouse in standard. Boros Charm continues to see play today in modern and legacy burn strategies. The next great creature for burn was Eidolon of the Great Rebel from Journey into Nyx. Featuring the same rules text as the Scourge Uncommon Pyrostatic Pillar, putting such a powerful ability on a creature instantly led to constructed success. An all-star during its time in standard, Eidolon of the Great Rebel remains the premier 2-drop creature for all burn decks in modern and legacy. A card that has lived up to its hype since its introduction in Constantark here is Monastery Swissphere. Competing with Goblin Guide and Grim Mancer for title of best red one-drop creature, Monastery Swift Spear's prowess and constructed has reached all formats, including Vintage. Atarka's Command is considered to be one of the most powerful burn spells ever printed. With four modes, all geared to benefiting an aggressive strategy, this powerful burn spell was in back-to-back -back Pro Tour winning decklists. During the preview season for Magic Origins, Abbot of Carol Keep was a sleeper card at first, but it only took two weeks for people to notice its potential. At the Pro Tour for the new set, Joel Larson took the crown piloting a red aggro deck with four copies of the Red Human Run. Since then, it's been one of Red's best two-drop creatures. 
Don't forget to subscribe to Gathering Magic for more Did You Know videos, as well as deck techs, Magic Online strategy videos, and more. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like or leave a comment below. Want to watch more Did You Know Magic videos? Click here to visit our playlist.